a Mercedes GLE size, all electric. Now it is available. Here it is, the Mercedes EQE SUV. The first time here, a full-size SUV, all electric by Mercedes. A little bit smaller, of course, than the EQS SUV. And we'll tell you all about it here with Thomas and Autogefühl for you. This one here is the EQE 53 AMG, so that sporty AMG version. Sodolith blue is the interesting color, and here the front grille of the AMG version has these vertical fins. There will be a 43 and a 53 version, then with horsepower difference. And you can see it's all the way closed and has a seamless integration into the headlamps. LED is standard for all EQE SUV. And here the digital light with elaborated high beam function is already standard for that AMG version. In this video here, we will also show you the normal Mercedes version as the EQE 500. And then you can compare both the AMG and the normal Mercedes model. All new AMG models have the new updated AMG logo here on top of the hood. That's another thing you can directly differentiate. Two big technology highlights for the EQE SUV, which will also have massive impact on the other electric models like EQS SUV, EQE sedan, EQS sedan, because the EQE SUV will introduce a heat pump now, finally. You might remember in earlier reviews of the EQE and the EQS sedans, I was saying like, it needs a heat pump. And I was also telling the Mercedes engineers that and they said, ah, we can also do without, it's efficient enough. No, it wasn't. In winter you had like range drops to like half of the range. That will be history now, I hope, because this is now featured with a heat pump as standard equipment. And I suppose they will also update that to the other electric models, then maybe with a model year change or with a facelift or so. Second biggest technology highlight is that you now can basically have a clutch on the front axle for the front electric motor if you have the all-wheel drive version. So the thing is, there is no mechanical link between the front and the uh, between the front and the rear axle. However, the motors are always running basically and so when you are in a rolling effect there is still some resistance. Now you can basically pull a clutch that's done automatically and then there's less rolling resistance when the car is just rolling. The heat pump itself will you know get you already some efficiency gains especially in winter time. This effect in here with the clutch on the front axle for the front motor supposed to bring you some 10% of efficiency gain. So we can calculate that this will easily score some 500 kilometers or 300 miles of range. With this 91 kilowatt hour battery net, there's just this one available. Under the hood, also the HEPA filter, if you went for that one. Therefore, the only thing you can open is this wiper opening here at the side. You cannot open the hood, it is just done for servicing. Wheels come from 19 to 22 inch. The AMG version here, 21 or 22 inch then, huge definitely. You can also get special brakes for this one. And the suspension setup also varies a little bit. The EQE SUV would usually come with adaptive dampers as standard, optional and air suspension, or which is then also standard for the EQS SUV in the AMG version. And then it also has a stiffer setup, but they have the same height. Interesting door steps here, uh, or this side steps here. You might think, ah, that's less efficient. No, it's actually better for the wind coefficient because in the lower part underneath, there's kind of like a curve, which is also then directing the wind stream to the back. And that is actually increasing efficiency. Very interesting. The length here overall is 4 meters 86 or 191 inches. And that means lengthwise, if you take a big comparator, the BMW iX. Lengthwise, it's basically that the iX sits between the EQE SUV and the EQS SUV lengthwise. This one here, wheelbase-wise, by the way, has the shortest wheelbase of the Mercedes EQE, uh, EQS setup. So this one has a shorter wheelbase even than the EQE sedan, supposed to making it more agile. And if you want to have, let's say, an even shorter faked <laughs> wheelbase. It comes with rear axle steering for the normal version. That's an option here for the AMG version. It is standard. The only difference is the AMG version has wider tires and that means nine degrees of rear axle steering, whereas the normal EQE SUV, the Mercedes setup has 
10 degrees of rear axle steering, where the rear wheels can turn in the opposite direction than the front wheels, faking a shorter wheelbase, more agile when it's driving slower, more stability when it's driving faster, and of course massively reducing the turning circle by more than a meter. Fun fact, if you forgot your hair comb and you're on the way, you can just put your head underneath the vehicle here in the front, then you have these individual short fins, or it's maybe, maybe like a like crocodile teeth. Well, the reason for that is these here also help increase the wind efficiency because the air is also better channeled alongside the wheel and there's less turbulences. Yeah, looks funny, but brings more efficiency. Yeah, and that's exactly how I helped Michelle to film that here underneath. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to try to comb my hair, but yeah, I can't really reach it. So you start with the EQE SUV 350, rear electric motor only, then the EQE SUV 500, all-wheel drive, one electric motor in the rear, one in the front, then the 43 AMG, and then the top model here, the 53, which has hardware changes then, so stronger electric motors, or they're upgraded hardware-wise, both rear and in the front. You will, in most situations, remain with rear-wheel bias, especially when you go into a sporty driving mode that you have, because the, the stronger electric motor is also always the one in the rear when you have an all-wheel drive version. Interesting, by the way, here, this curled design of the rear lamp signature in EQE, in EQE SUV models, they're like four curls. In the EQS and the EQS SUV, there are five curls here, so do they differentiate that a little bit. Light strip goes all the way through, seamless design. The AMG version then here has a sportier visual part and low pan, also the high gloss black as the contrast in here. The acceleration figure here for the top model, the EQE SUV 53 AMG or Mercedes AMG 53. 3.5 seconds in the acceleration figure, and yeah, um, you already heard that talking about naming. I also struggle myself, and I think also when you think about like you Google it or you put it in a YouTube search, I think it's a huge problem if you just put EQS SUV, EQE SUV. I would have given them separate names, then you can search for them, find a review of them. Now they will always be messing, ah, it's EQE, EQE or the EQ. SUV, you know, it's like saying, hey, uh, there's the Mercedes E-Class SUV. No, they named it GLE for a reason, you know. So what's your take on that? Looking forward to your comments. And recharging with the 200 kilowatt peak, DC charging at a good charging station, then 10 to 80% state of charge in around 30 minutes. Key fob, really good quality here with AMG logo then in the AMG version. Flush door handles are standard for the AMG model or an option for the other ones here. You can grab it in there and when you close the vehicle, you heard that? It's like an AMG goodbye sound. <laughs> well then, the door closing sound is mediocre, I would say. Inside of the doors, this is a so-called Neotex material. It's like a mixture of microfiber and neoprene. It's really cool, actually. Then here you have a soft touch leatherette article, Ambitex. Nice ambient lighting around this area, but a lot of hashtag capacitive BS buttons, for example, these here do not move. They don't give you a real feedback. And there's more of that, for example, than here also in the vehicle. This is the AMG interior. We'll also soon show the electric art interior and the AMG interior here. Yeah, you see it's really dark black seats. These are the sport seats with stronger accentuations and also this kind of separate head restraint. They are also available then with Dynamica microfiber on the inside. That would be possible here, for example. Cool is the steering wheel here with microfiber and carbon fiber. And this one is at the moment animal skin, but it will also come in leatherette. So this would then later be an animal skin free steering wheel. It is also then possible with the AMG line or AMG version seating position. You sit a little bit more upright than, for example, in the EQE sedan. So there, this SUV building style definitely has a positive effect. I cannot recommend the sport seats. They are really tight and especially for tall people like 189 or 6 for 2. Yeah, is enough headroom left? Yes, but 
you somehow feel caged in and not in a good way by the seat. So the seat ergonomics is something which Mercedes has to work on at this moment for their new models. Steering wheel up and down, there you find a nice position and you have a really nice handling here with that steering wheel. Looks great and also the, um, the handling itself and the design tells me, let's attack. In the interior you can very well see this hyper screen it is standard for the 53 model otherwise it's an option and i would not go for it optionally huge glass here otherwise you would just have the vertical screen here and when you start up it looks of course amazing but the other simple solution with the smaller vertical screen to me is actually yeah easier to control and you don't need so much screen and here also the passenger screen you don't really need that I love the ambient lighting, that looks cool. And you also have, for example, here this effect when you use the AC, put it colder or warmer, then you have this very, very nice temperature flow effect, for example. So that's very impressive, definitely. And the AMG model also has some special features in the interior. First of all, visually, I mean, here we have, sort of, for example, a carbon fiber decor that is then less black piano like I use, at least there. And then, for example, we can have this special dynamic select with special AMG gauges. I would say let's take a closer look at that. So here in this screen, this performance gauge, we can see electric motor visualization, for example, the energy flow, here the battery pack in the centralized vehicle, newton meters of torque, RPM, here like, you know, how the car is leaning and so on. The AMG version has in the 53 an anti-tilt control as well. That's interesting. And there are the driving modes. And for example, from comfort to sport, then you'll have more power on the rear electric motor. You hear this like this subtle growling. You can hear it on the interior and the exterior as well. So sound emulation then here for this vehicle. And another interesting feature is the IWC digital analog clock let's take it that way <laughs> it looks really interesting and you can use the start stop um, function in here and it, it's just like a real stopwatch then so yeah <laughs> it's a funny idea isn't it and the panoramic roof goes all the way across you have this slider when you want to close the sunshade when it's like really hot but um, it's also possible then to open it completely However, you have this capacitive slider here and yeah, to do that while driving is not that cool actually. So that's the way you can open it completely. That's also possible. The sunshade can also be closed with voice activation, by the way. And now as a comparison, the normal Mercedes version. So the non-AMG version, this one could be a 350 or a 500 EQE SUV. In this case, the AMG line. So that's the reason that the lower graphic here is almost the same AMG line and the 53 or 43 model, but with a different front grille here without the vertical fins. And this micro star pattern is actually an option you can go for, but very beautifully done, definitely. Light strip once again all the way through. This vehicle color here is velvet brown. It has some matte nuances there. You can see depending on light and shadow that it's not entirely shiny. Very interesting color, definitely. But I would always go for a very bright Thomas blue, of course. And here we also have the 22 inch wheels. So you can also have 22 inch wheels for the non AMG versions. And once again, in the side profile with a side step, has some design similarities with the GLA doesn't it you know when you look a little bit here from the distance this one also with the shadow lines so you have the black frames here around the windows and also the top of the mirror caps so you can also mix it a little bit so you have amg line exterior but it doesn't mean you have to go for amg line on the interior so you can vary that depending on what you like and if you look very closely the comparison with the amg had the vehicle color in the wheel arches. Here we have the contrasting more off-roadish look than here in the normal Mercedes version. So that's again, and also the matte black here, whereas in the AMG, the 53, we had the shiny black here, just as a contrast in the lower part. But I think it works in this case either way, doesn't it? The rear is, other than that, 
quite similar actually. And let's now take a look at the trunk. Holding the logo here and then it's 520 liters up to 1675. The width here a meter of 40 inches. The length a little bit less than a meter of 40 inches. So it's 95 centimeters here or 37 inches. And below here there's limited space for a charging cable. You have to squeeze it in basically. But of course, easy access and also here this even loading sill. The total height right here is 73 centimeters or 29 inches. Um, then you can see you have different folding options and to the front seats, the total length here is about yeah, it's one, yeah, it's like 185 in meters or 72 inches. And Folding this one, you can also fold this one, that is possible. And then there's also this step in between, let's take it that way. The Mercedes GLC also offers that. You can fold up this, like this, and then here you have a more upright seating position. So you have a little bit more trunk length and the people in the rear sit more upright. That would also be a solution. And now the Mercedes interior. So as I said, only because you picked AMG exterior doesn't mean you have to go AMG interior. So this is the electric art interior or the base interior. And here they picked a bright styling. You can go for different colors. And very important is these are the animal skin seats here at this moment. But it's really important that the EQ SUV starts animal free with Artico seats. So this would be you know, similar in the surface, but also feel very soft, but different stitching then and would be available in an animal free Artico or the high grade leatherette Ambitex surface in gray, black and also in a beige style. So you can have different colors there and then optional. You can go for dynamic on the inside and very important as well, if you take a look at this steering wheel, that steering wheel would from standard also come with a leather red animal free surface. Not here for this very vehicle, but the important message is that the EQE SUV as base model in most markets, it depends always on the market specifics, what they decide later on, but in most markets it will start actually animal free, not in every spec, but they increased the offerings there to reduce the use of resources, also better for animals and the environment. And if you now think about, oh, you know, like this plastic or oil use, it is, you know, when you really, you know, put it all together from cradle to the later recycling, less resources, less oil, less pollution for the whole environment. If you go animal free on the interior, that is just scientific fact. It's not about opinion, yes or no, actually. So here in this comfort seat, by the way, so this is also this comfort seat form, whereas we had the sport seat in the AMG version, this one feels a little bit more open and is definitely more comfortable. So my tip would be to go with the base version, actually stick with the comfort seat, pick one of the article leather red surfaces. Um, they're very comfortable and definitely, especially if you're tall, do not go for the sport seats. This is also a lovely interior choice here. Here it's a matte wood and then this micro star pattern. So this, this is actually, you know, really sophisticated. It takes a lot of work to create it in that way. When we slide it open here, by the way, they are cup holders and you can press them, but they do not hold bottles properly tight, especially if they are glass bottles or so on. We know them from the EQS and EQE sedans and yeah, they are indeed not ideal. Inductive charging mat here, two USB-C chargers. And then if we close it again, there is once again more of this hashtag capacitive BS and it's one button. And I really think about, you know, why would they do that? Like it, normally if I press here or here, it's one button. Doesn't that look cheap and feel cheap? I have no idea how they can do that. So um, it might look fancy and clean, but then when you touch it, hmm, it's not that great. I love, however, this split armrest opening. That's actually that's actually quite cool. <laughs> so, and then two more USB-C chargers, and wow, that's a lot of space there. Here we can once again very well see the ambient lighting, and uh, you can have also the energy shine and reacts also on acceleration and braking. We have also videos on that from the EQS, for example, from the EQS sedan. That looks really amazing. And by the way, here you have this base electric art steering wheel. So the AMG had the two horizontal spokes here. This one then with, you know, like this 
two clutter designs, so to speak, also with capacitive buttons. And this has a little bit more elegance, the other one sportiness. And then this one slot, I said slot design here in the lower part. Digital instruments, you can pick your styles like this understated view, for example, sports view, classic view. You also have the map full screen or something, assistance systems. Oh, off-road is also quite interesting. Look at, wow. And there's also a head-up display available. And here on the passenger screen, you can also have some personalized background pictures. Really beautiful, isn't it? I know, it's that video where I always have to go underneath the vehicle to show you even more features. Not only <laughs> of this wind comb in the front or the side steps here, but when you actually open the vehicle, there is a sound emulation of this like, ooh, it's an electric spaceship coming up. Let's listen to that. Do you hear that? There are actually speakers underneath the vehicle going like this. Ooh, welcome to the electric Mercedes world. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's really funny. Do you like it or not? Tell me in the comments. And we have, of course, still the rear of that vehicle. And you can already see the big advantage of the SUV is, although we have a shorter wheelbase due to this more upright seating position, we will have more leg room and will we also have more comfort because you might remember one of our biggest criticisms with the EQE sedan and the EQS sedan was that the rear seating comfort is extremely bad in these. And here in the SUVs it's indeed way better because you have the more upright seating position and uh, the you know the backrest in the sedan is really upright and it doesn't fit to the rest of the lower bench. And here you have a better seating angle then, especially if you're taller, also still legroom left. This is the seat as I would be driving as a tall person. And also headroom in the rear is actually no problem. I wouldn't say it's the most comfortable car ever here in the rear, but definitely way more comfortable than the sedans. Um, also using that EV platform, no middle tunnel. Therefore, you can also sit in the middle part. It's a little bit stiff than here at the rear. No wrong ideas here. <laughs> yeah, for short ways maybe, but five tall adults can easily be housed here. You have a separate climate unit. In the lower part here, you have two more USB-C chargers. And then you can have here either like the smartphone holder or to be gentle like this and then you have more cup holders here so overall i really have to say when you compare eqe eqe suv eqs eqs suv this eqe suv here is the best choice you now have the heat pump you have this clutch or this decoupling of the front electric motor if you, if you have an all-wheel drive version for better efficiency you have better rear seating comfort than in the sedans. And this one is not as expensive and not as large as the EQS SUV. So to me at this moment, the EQE SUV seems to be their best offering in their electric lineup. And again, when you keep it base version, pick the animal free seating and even steering wheel version, you have a also forward going sustainable interior then and can also keep the price low, leave out the hyper screen and stuff. 8,500 euros extra, so then you can more or less have a good entry version of the EQS, the EQE SUV and profit from this you know, increased efficiency here. If you want to see the EQE sedan, we already have a video of that. Or if you want that SUV building style electric, but just a little bit bigger, check out our video of the EQS SUV.